It's being called one of the most impressive scientific feats of the 21st century. Department of Energy officials have announced a history-making accomplishment in the decades-long quest to harness fusion, the same energy that powers the sun. The technology could have major implications for climate change and energy needs around the world. And ABC News Chief Meteorologist Ginger Z joins me live now with more on this. So, Ginger, <laughs> break this down for us. How does this process work? What exactly were researchers able to do here? You see all of my notes. Love it. I, love I don't it. always have we're notes like out this. We're today. I'm into it. You know, um, Stephanie Ebbs, who's on our climate unit, and I were just listening to the entire announcement, and I could have sat and listened to the panel forever because it's once you get it, you get really excited. Mm -hmm. And fusion, which is what they've now accomplished, a contained fusion, which is a combination of atoms. It makes sense, fusing, right? Now, fusion of this, of hydrogen atoms, is something that we've known for more than a century could work. We've actually done it in an uncontained form called nuclear bombs. We don't want to do that. No, that has no, a lot of bad, bad implications. Um, this would be a safe and equitable way to put a sun or the stars in a box and the power that they hold and then be able to distribute it to people. And that's why this is so exciting. It's something that they've been working on at this lab for more than 60 years. But science is all about trial and error and about possibility. Now they've made that possibility a probability. And this really then becomes more about time and how do we get it done as fast as we need. Well, and this has been a decades long initiative. So what are some of the challenges they faced along the way? And how did they finally overcome that to get to where we are now? They were describing how they've put 192 lasers against a tube for decades and, and they haven't gotten <laughs> gotten just the right combo until just last week. So that's exactly what they were doing. The little, the pellet, they said, the size of a little like BB gun's pellet is exactly what they were pointing those lasers at, trying to get the heat just right. And now this turns into something that is incredibly important for not just the United States and our future, but the world of energy. Uh, the Secretary of Energy, Jennifer Granholm, started it out and she had a really good sound. We can advance fusion energy. We could use it to produce clean electricity, uh, transportation fuels, power heavy industry, so much more. It would be like adding um, a power drill to our toolbox in building this clean energy economy. That power drill that doesn't create carbon, it doesn't create nuclear waste. None of the things, because what we've done with nuclear power in the past is fission, that's breaking apart those atoms. Mm. This is a completely different combo. But what's going to be the big question is, how do you get the materials? How do you get the rollout? And people were asking really good questions. Like you say a decade until we can do this, but really when does it become commercialized? It could take decades from now. And that's where in the world of climate change, that's not what we want to see because right. we need a quicker, we've already seen how difficult it is to think about changing a grid for solar, wind, offshore wind. Imagine if we start to have to make fusion laboratories everywhere and trying to take the harnessing of the sun and stars and putting that out into our grid. Is there any kind of a building block process here where maybe we can link between where we are now and where they see us being in decades? I think there's no question. I think they were waiting for the science to come in, but now it's going to take money. And somebody said it very well. This is no longer just a public funded thing. It has to become a privately uh, funded thing. And, and we're talking about those plants, which a lot of places, I guess, in the UK, there are several that are working on the magnetic um, fields and how to do this and make these operable like they were waiting for this and then they're ready to put this into motion but still decades from now is not going to be quick enough especially when most scientists in the world say we need to get away from fossil fuels yesterday all right the clock is ticking putting the sun and stars in a box <laughs> love the analogy ginger thank you you got it Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.